Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Magnus and today we will be talking about different ways to build redundancy within the data center. So we start off with the spanning tree. I don't think anyone is using spanning tree in the data centers anymore, maybe in some legacy equipment. But more or less you did have a bunch of switches. Maybe you have core and you have access switches. Uh, sometimes you even have distribution switches. And then you connect these access switches to the core. But the problem with spanning tree was that you couldn't have full redundancy. So spanning tree did actually disable a few links. Um, so it disabled all the redundant links that it came up if you needed to. And this means that the server themselves, they could only be connected with HA instead of an active active like LACP. So what come after that was VPCs, so virtualized port channels. So it's a virtualized port channel between two different switches or a chassis, similar to VSS. So if we build a topology uh, with VPCs instead, then we can use a lot more links and we can get it redundant. Normally you'd still have your core and then you have some access layers. So you do uh, VPC links between all the switches and to make a VPC you actually need to do a VPC domain as well. So you need to have a VPC uh, peer link and you need to have a keep alive. And the benefit of this is that you can use LACP so you can have an active active connection to the servers. Um, the drawback of it is that you needed to dedicate the physical ports on each switch for the VPC peer link and for the keep alive link. And the keep alive link most actually did use the management port on the Nexus 5000. So then you miss out on a out of band management port as well. And when you have your peer link and your keep alive link, you did do a VPC domain. So you needed to add a few numbers and a few lines of configuration. So it wasn't hard and I thought it was quite good. And after this uh, VPC, you could combine this with uh, Fabric Path instead. So let's go into Fabric Path. So Fabric Path did require licensing, but on the other hand, it was a great protocol. It had more or less no design limitation and very little config to get it up and running. So if we do the normal spine leaf architecture, the benefit of the Fabric Path was that it did utilize all links in the Fabric Path network. So in the middle here, we have the fabric path or the fabric. And here it did load share between all the links back and forward, similar to how ACI do today. And you needed the um, enhanced layer two license to get this to work. And you still needed to have the links between the different switches and make the VPC domains and you needed the VPC domains to be able to connect servers as um, LACP or active active. But other than this, other than the license cost, I don't think there was any drawbacks of the fabric path um, the system that you could build. And fabric path, it did not have any design limitations at all, uh, except for the the cabling that was lost due to the VPC domain, but that was not really fabric path. So just an example, if we did have multiple sites in multiple data centers, meaning more than two, if you have more than two data centers, it starts to get complicated to uh, connect them to each other. But with fabric path, you can connect it however you want and it will still work and it will still do load sharing between everything. So 
I did really like Fabric Path and I still use Fabric Path in a few of the data centers. Um, I really think it's a shame that Cisco did uh, remove it from the Nexus 9000. I would have loved to have it uh, still there, but I think it would be a very hard competitor to Cisco ACI. So if we go for Cisco ACI instead, um, Cisco ACI requires you to build a spine leaf architecture. Uh, now they have added a tier two, so you can have leaf switches in different levels. That gives a few more design possibilities. And you can still have VPCs to servers, even that you don't have the physical cables between the leaf switches. So there will be a virtualized uh, peer keep alive. There will be a virtualized peer link. So it will fix everything in the fabric automatically. You only need to configure um, the VPC domain. So you see here that you actually save a lot of ports by not needing to use this uh, uh, peer link cables. These two leaf switches, they need to be configured together in the APIC and it's called uh, explicit, I believe. It's called explicit uh, VPC protection group. And that's the only thing that you need to configure to to uh, be able to use VPCs to your servers. But the issue with the Cisco ACI is that it requires APICs, that meaning servers for configuration. You cannot do configuration in CLI. It requires a lot of licensing and they're quite expensive. You also have a lot of design limitation in Cisco ACI compared to Cisco Fabric Path. And I think that's really a shame they have added more design options, so it's getting better. If you did like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see anything else. And i see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.